All right, this is number five from uh, 2009B on both the A, B, and B, C exams. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is write the equation of a tangent line um, to g of x, which is equal to e to the f of x, and we're told that f of 1 is 2. So we're looking for the tangent line to g of x at x equals 1. So we need a derivative, so g prime is e to the f of x times f prime of x. Do not forget the chain rule there. We've got to substitute some values. Um, so e to the f of 1 times f prime of 1. We know that um, f of 1 is 2 because that was given. Uh, then we actually were told, or we could look at the graph. Um, actually, uh, we're only told on the graph, in fact. Uh, so if you look at the graph, we know that um, f prime of 1 is negative 4, and you can see that ordered pair is given on the graph. That's actually not given anywhere else, so you needed to look at the graph to find that. Um, so that's negative 4e squared. Um, g of 1 is just e of f of 1, e to the f of 1, which is uh, e squared, and then tangent line. So point slope form on this one, uh, kind of, I guess you could simplify it, but I don't know why you would. Um, all right, next thing is we're going to find where g has a local maximum. And we've already found this derivative, so I'm just jotting it down again for you. And we've got to think about this. So e to the f of x is always greater than 0. Um, so that means that the sine of g prime is really just uh, determined by the sine of f prime, right? Because it's the product of e to the f of x and f prime of x. So we look at f prime, and we see the only place that it changes from positive to negative is at x equals negative 1. Um, and since that's the only place that it changes, um, that's the only place that uh, g of x can have a relative maximum. And that's pretty much our answer to that question. So it involved looking at a couple of things, but it wasn't particularly hard, I guess. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're given g double prime, kind of thankfully, because that doesn't look like something we'd want to find. Um, although it's not really bad, it's just product rule and then some factoring. Um, all right, so e to the f of negative 1. Uh, we're looking for g double prime of negative 1 to determine if it's positive, negative, or 0. Um, so e to the f of negative 1 is going to be greater than 0. Um, f prime of negative 1 is equal to 0, um, which was given. And then if we look at the graph, at the graph of f prime at negative 1 is clearly decreasing, which means that f double prime of negative 1 is less than 0, um, since f prime is decreasing. And then we combine that. So we have a positive, we have 0, and we have a negative. So we're doing a positive times a negative, ultimately. Therefore, uh, g double prime of negative 1 is less than 0. And that would be my answer to that. Um, in part d, we're looking for the average rate of change. Um, and one thing you definitely need to know is that average rate of change is just algebra 1 slope. Okay, there's nothing more to it. Sometimes it's hard to figure out the y values and all that, but we're just doing algebra 1 slope. So, um, the average rate of change of g prime of x on the interval from 1 to 3 is algebra 1 slope, so that's going to be g prime of 3 minus g prime of 1 over 3 minus 1. Uh, we haven't actually calculated g prime of 3 at this point, so let's do that. Um, we know g prime of x, which I've now done like four times, is given by that. And from that you can see that g prime of 3 will be 0 because f prime of x at 3, if you go back and look at the graph, f prime of 3 is uh, 0. So that's 0. So now we substitute in what we know. Um, we actually found g prime of 1 in part a. Um, so we fill that in. So 0 minus negative 4e squared, um, which is just positive 4e squared over 2. So 2e squared. Um, and that's the problem. And uh, I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.